Morning, everybody. Pastor Jim Gunter here, Director of Food Service, and uh, glad to be with you yet another day. Can't wait till we're back in person. And uh, today I want to talk to you about really one word, uh, integrity. And uh, integrity is a word that, you know, you think during this coronavirus thing is, uh, I don't know, uh, not really uh, relevant, but uh, I think it would be hard to make a case that integrity isn't always relevant. Um, the scripture we're going to look at today is in Proverbs, it's 11.3, and it says, the integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the uh, perverseness of the transgressors shall destroy them. Okay, that's the verse we're going to look at. The story we're going to look at today uh, is the story of Daniel. Most everybody knows the story of Daniel in the lion's den. Uh, if you were in church at all as a child, um, everybody hears about Daniel in the lion's den and how he wasn't destroyed. But we're going to look at not the fact that Daniel wasn't eaten by the lions um, and not just the fact that God protected him, which we all know, but why? Um, today, a uh, brief, uh, we'll, we'll cliff note down the story of Daniel and the lion's den. Uh, King Darius is in power and he puts some other uh, kind of vice president guys in power and Daniel is one of them and he's actually the head of them. Well, the other guys don't like Daniel because he, uh, has a different God, and they, they just don't like Daniel, so they set out a scheme against him. They can't find anything wrong against him because he's a man of integrity. Uh, he's a man of God. So they have to make something up, and they said, the only way we're gonna get anything on this guy is if it's related to his God because he's not gonna compromise on things of his God. So they go to the king, and they get a scheme that says, oh, king, you're great. Uh, like most kings of the day, uh, King Darius had a uh, theo ego, uh, thought he was God, and uh, they said, King, for 30 days, you need to pass a decree that says people can only pray to you and worship you, only you, and if not, they'll be cast into the den of lions. So King Darius, with his inflated theo ego, says, okay, so ordered. So he signs this decree, and uh, Daniel hears about the decree, and what does Daniel do? He remains a man of integrity. Daniel goes home. His curtains are open. He prays three times a day. He prays right in front of his open window. He doesn't change his routine. Daniel stays with it, talking to God. Well, the leaders know that they've got him. They go back to the king and they say, King, you decreed this. It says under the law that you can't change this. The king's devastated. The king loves Daniel, but there's nothing he can do. So he throws him in the lion's den. And you know what happens there? Uh, nothing. Nothing. The king gets up the next morning, runs to the, the den, and says, Daniel, are you in there? Daniel says, yep, yeah, I'm here. God sent an angel to block the mouth of the lions. So the king puts out a decree that everybody is to worship the living God of Daniel. Okay, the verse earlier told us the perverseness of the transgressors will destroy them. Well, the king took all the other leaders that were with Daniel at his level that had conspired against him and didn't just throw them in the lion's den, he threw their families in there with them, their wives and children. So destroy is an accurate word, they were destroyed, okay? So Daniel was put into the lion's den because of his integrity to God. Daniel was protected in the lion's den because of his integrity to God, okay? So we're gonna look at a couple of things today. Um, just how do we build integrity? How do we develop it if uh, we're young and we, we, we don't have it? And to say you don't have integrity sounds kind of, kind of funny, but um, how, do, how do we really hone or polish this integrity? Uh, the first thing is we don't wait around for something to happen. You can't wait until your circumstances are better to have integrity. You can't wait on your boss, you can't wait on your wife, you can't wait on your family, you can't wait on anything to have integrity, to, to wait. Um, one of the, the key things is setting your standards in advance. Uh, when I was uh, young, raising a family, uh, when my parents were raising me, one of the things that my parents taught me and that we, we taught our boys was you have to make decisions who you are and what you do before you're in the situation. Uh, for me, I don't rob banks. So if somebody says to me, hey Jim, I know where we can get $3 million, 
uh, throw this stocking over your head and we're gonna go rob this bank. I don't have a decision to make. I don't rob banks, so my answer is no. Uh, that's obvious. I'm probably not talking to anybody here that robs banks. But there are other things that we do you cheat on your taxes or do you do this? Um, you have to decide, we have to decide as Christians where our limits are, what we do and what we don't do. There are absolutes. So when the, when the storm comes and it comes up against you and you're financially strapped and someone offers you a shady opportunity to make your uh, mortgage payment, you don't have a decision to make. Your decision's already made. That's, that's your integrity. That's where your integrity really shows. Uh, one of the things that we noticed that Daniel, I mentioned earlier, he had three times a day, he had devotion. Our day, uh, I was taught by a man named Brian Evans uh, that continues to mentor me, and you've heard me mention him in these posts before, uh, to begin the day in prayer, and in a sense, don't say amen. Just keep your day living in a posture of prayer. Um, so when these things come, you're in a posture of prayer when they arise. Uh, it's not, ooh, I'll pray about this. You're already there. Uh, our life is, is prayer. One of the greatest things for integrity to help us to, that I've used over the years or people have used in me is accountability. I have a group of men in my life uh, that can ask me questions that only they can ask me. Uh, they can probably ask me questions I'm not sure my wife can can ask me, but they can ask me questions that I will not lie to them. Uh, there again, it's one of those things I set early to determine. I will not lie to this group. Uh, so I will talk to these, these gentlemen, uh, rarely in a group anymore because we're scattered over the country, but individually. And uh, when we have a conversation, regardless of what it's about, uh, it always goes at some time to, with each other, how you doing? How you really doing? How's everything? Uh, how's, how's this situation we talked about last time? Uh, we have to be accountable. We ultimately, of course, are accountable to God. But on a daily basis, on an earthly um, realm, being accountable to somebody, and if you're gonna be accountable to somebody, if I'm gonna be accountable to somebody, I have to be 100% honest. Because if I'm not, I'm wasting everybody's time, and there again, the integrity thing's gone out the window. And what makes this most important and most possible at the same time is we have to realize that our integrity is not just so, uh, someday we'll all die, and people will, uh, I guess once the COVID thing's over, people will stand around at a funeral or look at a casket and uh, I want them to say about me, I want them to say he was a man of God. He loved his God. I want him to say he was a family man. He loved his family. And one of the things I want him to say way up there on that list is he was a man of integrity. His word was his word. Um, he had integrity. But if the world thinks I have integrity, on a worldly basis, and I don't have it to God, it's nothing. So Daniel could have taken an earthly stand, but he chose to take a heavenly stand. So Daniel's integrity transferred from the earthly realm to the heavenly realm where his anchor, and he had decided what he would do. Daniel decided early he wasn't gonna bow to anybody, he wasn't gonna pray to anybody else, he was anchored in God. So when we, when we die and we stand before God, I want God to recognize me as a man of integrity, to say about me what he said about David, that he was a man after his own heart. So as we uh, close this, I'm gonna uh, have a moment of silence. I'm gonna uh, pray silently with myself. You guys pray. Then I will uh, take a minute and close this out. But know how much uh, I enjoy being able to meet with you guys in the mornings and uh, just offer uh, this little bit of a uh, little peek at what God's doing in my personal life because that's really the, the best way for me to share with you is share what God's doing in my personal life. So let's be silent and uh, pray together.
Heavenly Father, you are the God of perfection. Lord, and you have not called us to perfection because we can't be perfect. But Father, you have called us to mirror Christ. Lord, you have called us to have integrity. And Lord, I pray that as, as I bow my head here, Lord, and each person bows their head, Father, that we would know that we will stand for you no matter what that brings. If it brings a lion, um, then today's world, it's probably not gonna bring a lion. But Lord, there are a lot of lions that can roar to the door today, Lord, the lions of finance and the, the, all the other lions that are out there prowling around looking to devour us. But Father, we pray that you send those angels, Father, to lock their mouths, Father, to block their jaws. Lord, let us stand in strength in you. If we stand in you, grounded in our faith and mirror Christ, Lord, we can't live without integrity. It has to go hand in hand. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to be here this morning. I thank you for each person that is watching this, Father. Lord, and I ask that you would use these words that I pray you have delivered, Father, to speak to each heart individually, Father, and work it to your glory. I ask it in Jesus' name, amen.